In this experiment, we are going to study magnetic force on a current carrying wire. Magnetic field exerts force on electrons in conductor. Since electrons have nowhere to escape, force transmitted to the wire. At figure 1, you can see a representation of the system. The magnitude of force is equal to product of magnitudes of Q, V, B and the sinus of angle between magnetic field and current. Since we are using sinus, the magnitude of force will be maximum when they are perpendicular to each other, and force will be zero when they are parallel. As we know, speed is displacement of a body per unit time. Then we can write V as D over T. Similar to definition of speed, current is the amount of charges that passes through a point on a wire per unit time, which means current equal to Q over T. And finally, our equation takes form of equation 3. Magnitude of F equals to product of I, L, B, and sinus theta. In the vector form, Force is equal to L times cross product of I and B. To define the direction of force, right hand rule is a useful tool. In our case, when our thumb pointing to the direction of current and our forefingers are showing the direction of magnetic field, our palm will show us the direction of force which is perpendicular to the plane of I and B. These are the equipments which will be used in the experiment. A power supply, a lab stand, a balance which measures forces with an accuracy of 0.91 gram mass equivalent, six magnets inside an insulator package which will be used as magnetic field source. And there are interconnected copper wires on these yellow boards. The horizontal segment of these wire connections have already measured and noted. So the effective length of the wires which will be used are known. And as you can see, there are six different boards which are having different horizontal wire lengths. The C current will be connected to the apparatus using these wires and slots. The direction of current flow is from positive to negative end and also keep your attention on that the polarization of magnets are colorized. Red color indicates the north and white color indicates the south, south magnetization pole. The direction of magnetic fields is from red to white end. The wire apparatus is going to be fixed on the support with an appropriate tight. The horizontal segment of the wire affected by magnetic field will be lying in this cavity part without touching any side. As you can see in this placement the direction of current flow is perpendicular to the magnetic field. The magnetic force created will be either upwards or downwards. According to the configuration of our setup and using right hand rule the magnetic force created will be upwards. But because of the wire apparatus could not move, that force will be create a mass change on the balance. Because of the fact that magnetic force is related with current flowing on the wire, length of the wire, the magnetic field strength, and the angle between wire direction where the current will flow, and direction of magnetic field, this experiment will be realized in four parts. In the first part of the experiment, the relation between force and current on the wire. In the second part, the relation between force and length of the wire. In the third part, the relation between force and magnetic field strength. Lastly, in the fourth part of the experiment, the relation between force and the angle between wire direction and magnetic field will be investigated. In the first part of the experiment, the other parameters will be kept constant and starting from zero current value, the mass of the magnet assembly will be measured. The first data 
with the zero current value will be noted as the magnet's mass. Then the current value is arranged as 1 ampere and new value of mass is measured When the current flow is set approximately to 2 amperes, the new mass is measured and recorded. After that, the current is set to be approximately 3 amperes. The corresponding mass reading is going to be recorded. Again, the current is set nearly to 4 amperes and the corresponding mass value on the balance is measured and recorded. Lastly, the current is said to be approximately 5 amperes and the corresponding mass reading on the balance is measured and noted. With the data taken, the relation between magnetic force and current is going to be examined by making a use of a plot. The theoretical expectation is that the slope of baseline is equal to the field strength times the length of the wire. Since the length of the wire used is known, file strength can be calculated using the slope. An additional note is that the unit of the balance measurements are in grams. So the unit conversation is done with multiplying the mass in kilogram with Earth's gravitational acceleration and converted values are used in the graphs during the experiment. In the second part of the experiment, the other parameters will be kept constant and the length of the wire is going to be changed. The wire, which has horizontal length of 2.2 cm, will be used firstly. When the current is sent to the wire, the corresponding mass value will be recorded when the white arrows on the balance equipment are on a line. New wire apparatus, which is 3.2 cm in horizontal length, is going to be placed on a lap stand. And after turning on the current, the corresponding mass value will be recorded. After that, wire apparatus, which has a horizontal length of 4.2 cm, is placed. And the corresponding mass value will be noted.
following that the wire with length of 6.4 cm is going to place on a lap stand And the corresponding value of mass is going to be observed. Lastly, the wire with length of 8.4 cm is going to be used and the corresponding mass value will be recorded. With the data collected from the second part of the experiment, the relation between magnetic force and length of the wire is going to be examined. It is clearly seen that the relationship is linear and with the use of slope of the graph, magnetic field strength of the magnet assembly can be calculated. In the third part of the experiment, the relation between magnetic force and magnetic field will be investigated. In order to change the strength of magnetic field, the number of magnets inside an insulating box will be changed and the other parameters like current and wire length will be constant. Firstly, only one magnet will be used as a magnetic field source. Because of the fact that by adding magnets, the mass of magnet assembly will change each time. Firstly, the mass of magnet assembly will be observed when there is no current. And after that, the C current will be supplied to the circuit and new mass will be measured. After the measurement is taken and the power supply is turned off, second magnet will be added to the assembly. Before applying a current, the mass of magnet assembly is noted. And now the new mass reading will be done when there is a current flowing in the circuit. And the procedure will be continued like that 
up to six magnets in an insulating box. By the use of data collected from third part of the experiment and from the graph, the linear relation between magnetic force and magnetic field is observed. The mass of magnet assembly when there is a current on the wire is subtracted from the mass of a magnet assembly when there is no current. And the result is multiplied by Earth's gravitational acceleration. In the last part of the experiment, a different magnet assembly and a different wire apparatus will be used. By the use of them, the angle between wire direction and magnetic field can be changed, both in clockwise and counterclockwise directions. The measurement will be started when the direction of current flow and the direction of magnetic field are parallel to each other. So, because of the sign of zero degree is zero, the first mass reading will be the magnet's original mass. After recording this value, the angle of wire apparatus will be changed with 10 degree intervals, up to 90 degree with recording of each new mass value. In the last part of the experiment, the relation between magnetic force and the angle between wire direction and magnetic field is examined. The graph constructed from the data taken show that there is an exponential relation between force and angle which is compatible with the theoretical expectation. From the graph it is clearly seen that when the angle is zero degree, that means the wire and the magnetic field is parallel to each other, the force is zero. And while the angle is increasing, the force is also increasing. At 90 degree, that means when the wire and magnetic field are perpendicular to each other, the magnetic force reaches its maximum value. 